These are my textbooks. They're the four textbooks that I have amassed over the last almost three years as an astrophysics student. They are Haldi, Resnick and Walker's Principles of Physics, Blundell and Blundell's Concepts in Thermal Physics, Robinette's Quantum Mechanics, and Schneider's Extragalactic Astronomy and Cosmology. And they all have something in common. Let's have a look inside. So looking at the inside of all four of these books, the formatting looks all very similar, doesn't it? Like, they've, got, they've all got a pretty similar structure. Most of them are either one or two columns. They use a pretty similar font. All, all of their section headings follow a pretty similar pattern like this with like 7.3.1. And if you ignore the content of them, the fact that extragalactic astronomy is very different from quantum mechanics, if you ignore the differences in content, they look extremely similar. So this begs the question, have I just got the four most similar looking textbooks in all of physics and astronomy? Or is this more widespread? Is this something that extends through all of physics or perhaps even all of science. Let's go and have a look. It's much the same in scientific papers as well. I've pulled four papers off the archive, the sort of pre-published place that uh, people put up papers that haven't been peer-reviewed yet, but they hope will be peer-reviewed correct, like as, as accurate and put into a journal. And it's much the same. Let's have a look. We've got one here talking about the Hubble UV legacy library of young stars. Like that looks pretty similar in format to the ones I was looking at before in my textbooks. Or what about this one on information theoretic measure for task complexity in deep reinforcement learning? I'm pretty sure this is a, comp like a computer science paper. Um, this looks pretty similar as well. This is strange. And what about this one? This is group theory. This is mathematics. Again, it's pretty similar. We don't have a two column layout, but you can see from the the headings and the font that they're using, and just how it's laid out, this is very similar as well. What's going on? What's going on is something called LaTeX. Now this is something that's used by scientists all over the world, and over the rest of this video I'm going to be explaining what is LaTeX, why is LaTeX, and how is LaTeX, and yes that is a very out of order Avengers reference. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Thomas Rintoul, I'm a third year astrophysics student, this is my channel where I talk about science and university life, and in this video I'm going to be doing a tutorial explaining a bit about LaTeX from a beginner's perspective. So no prior knowledge required, and don't worry if you don't really know what LaTeX is. If you do, there's timestamps in the video description below that will take you straight to the tutorial, and if not, then sit tight and I will explain a bit about LaTeX and why I'm even bothering to make this video. So. What is LaTeX? LaTeX is, when you boil it down to it, a software for word processing. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, we've already got Microsoft Word, Google Docs, LibreOffice, Apple Pages. Why do we need another one? Well, for one thing, this predates all of them. And for another, they all fall short in a few key areas, especially if you're dealing with science. That being said, LaTeX is more complicated than Word, Pages, LibreOffice, Google Docs. It is a more complicated piece of software because it is not what we call a WYSIWYG. A what you see is what you get. That's what all those other softwares are. What you see on the screen is what is printed out when you press Control P or whatever the shortcut is on a Mac. LaTeX is different. In LaTeX, we type in something called plain text. There's not a Control B and suddenly whatever you've highlighted is bold. You've got to enclose things in curly brackets and do backslash BF. It's more like coding than it is Word. And this is actually really useful. The other key difference is that you don't print from the LaTeX file or the tech file, the .tex. What you do is you pass that into a compiler that then makes something like a PDF, something that anyone can open. Even Google Chrome can open a PDF file. So that's what LaTeX is. But now, why? Why do we bother with this more cumbersome software that is harder to use, is less intuitive than something like Word? Well, there's a few key advantages. First one, it's free. 
The second one, equations. Now this is the this is the big one. LaTeX was created to be good at equations, being able to like write them out. If you've seen in any textbook or any scientific paper, equations that actually look decent rather than a sort of odd string of normal characters that are trying to pretend to be math symbols. If you've got that sort of weird string of characters, then that's because they're not using LaTeX. The one that looks good is LaTeX. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking, doesn't Microsoft Word have an equation editor? And yes, it does. It's actually the best of its kind. And it's terrible. Like, it is just really, really bad. There's also a certain advantage with bibliographies, something that a lot of other softwares aren't quite as good at, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. I'm going to make a follow-up video to this where I go into more of the formatting side and also bibliographies and integration with something called Mendeley, which I mentioned in my video about what apps I use in my physics degree. But that's not the topic for this video, but it is another good advantage to LaTeX. It's just a little bit more beyond beginner level. So that's the why. But the bulk of this video is going to be left to the how. How do we use LaTeX? I've hinted that it's not as simple as just firing up Word. Well, for one thing, you can't write it in Word. I suppose you probably could, but it would be horrific, and I don't even know if Word can output tech files. I'm getting off topic. Let's talk about editing LaTeX. Now, there are a few different ways to write LaTeX. Now, you don't do it by downloading a software called LaTeX and you fire it up and it runs. You write LaTeX in really anything. Technically, you could write it in something like Notepad, though I would not recommend that. A lot of people write LaTeX in an online editor. A common one is called Overleaf. It looks kind of like this when you open up the main project window where you can select your projects. Now, you can create projects by going to New Project, Blank Project, and calling this, I don't know, LaTeX Beginner's Tutorial. When that loads up, it gives you the base stuff you need to get started and it compiles the right hand side. Now compiling is the process of turning your tech file into a PDF. So that's done that here. Now it's given us obviously the title that I gave the, the project to begin with. It's given you it's given us my name and March 2021. Now this is what's been populated over on this side. But this isn't the only way to create a LaTeX file. The other way you can do it is to use an, a normal editor that can edit anything. Overleaf is really designed for LaTeX, but I use something called Atom. This is a program that can edit any language, so I use it currently for LaTeX, Python, and Fortran 90. But I know other people who have used it for things like HTML editing, and it's not the only one of its kind. Atom is the one I prefer because I know how it works and I quite like the interface. I know other people that swear by VS Code, and some people who swear by Sublime, which is a bit older. These are a bit different. For example, Atom, you open up and it looks like this. This is something you install on your computer and it's a bit more effort to get it running. You have to actually download something called Tech Live or something similar to it that installs LaTeX on your computer. I'll put a link to that in the video description. But it's not just quite that easy. Um, let me open up a .tech file and I'll show you what I mean. So. I've opened a new text file in Atom. This is a little different. Like at the minute, this is just called untitled. If I start typing, then yeah, you get some letters, but they don't really mean anything. And if I typed something like, obviously I'm not doing this in LaTeX, but if I typed print hello world, in any, in any other editor, you'd expect that to appear with some highlighting. For example, if that was in Python, for example, then there you go, lit up blue and a sort of teal color. It starts telling you what these things are. Now, we're not doing Python, we are, we are doing LaTeX. Now there's a way you can tell it to do this. In Atom and in VS Code and Sublime, you'll have to do this. In Overleaf, you won't. So if you're gonna use Overleaf, just ignore this. But I know that some people will be familiar with editors, just not LaTeX. I type in LaTeX beginners, Tutorial. I'm going to put in hyphens here just to make it a little easier for calling things later. Probably not important, but it's the sort of thing that can trip you up later and it makes things easier if they're just all one string of text. Now to make this a LaTeX file, a tech file, you do dot tex save. And then because I 
manually chose Python, I'll have to change this to LaTeX, but it would have done it automatically had I not specified Python. So make that LaTeX, and then if I type in, for example, the first command that you need to use in LaTeX, backslash document class, there you go, lit up in green. This has started linting the file. Now, these are all packages you have to download for Atom. I'll put a list with links in the video description with the ones that I use. There are probably other ones that do similar, if not better jobs, but these are just the ones that I use. Anyway, let's have a look at creating this. Our aim is that we want to go and create a PDF file that can be looked at in anything else. LaTeX is a little different from something like Word in that you can't just start typing. You need to tell it a few things to get going. The first thing you need to be able to tell it is what sort of paper are you using? For example, are you using A4, A5, A3, or letter paper? What are you actually typing onto? So the way you do this is using this document class command. The first thing you want to do to specify that is to put in some square brackets after document class, but before the curly brackets. So the first thing we need is we're using A4 paper, so you type in that. And you can also set your sort of default text size. So I'm going to go with 11 point because that seems like roughly the right size for something you would print. It's what I would tend to use. Then in the curly brackets, you need to tell it what type of document you're using. This will affect things later on. Now, most of what we're going to be writing in LaTeX will be articles. So I'm going to go with the article class. This is what I tend to be writing. If I'm writing a lab report, or an article for a module, I'm gonna be writing it in document class article. So let's stick with that. There's then a couple of other packages that we're going to need. The first one, if we want to have a title that works properly, is we're going to need to use the use package command. So backslash use package, and then the package name is authblk. Another command that you should definitely put in just now is the input enc package. This you want to specify as uft8. I can't quite remember what that does, but if I've remembered to look it up, it will appear about here. But it's something that I always have in mind and it's very useful to have. I can't quite remember what it's for. I think it's something to do with some symbols and that sort of thing. Everything in LaTeX starts with a backslash, at least every command. Backslash, square brackets, uft, uh, no, UTF-8 and then input ENC. So that's really all we need to get going just now. Now we need to talk about formatting the page. So where is your text going to appear? This means defining margins. Now there will be default margin sizes set in and we're going to stick to them mostly. The first one is the top margin, which we want to set to be zero centimeters. So it's exactly where it is by default. We then want to look at even side margin. That could help if I wasn't putting spaces. Spaces really are not going to help here. Um, now we, w I tend to like these to be a little, take a little bit more space than the default. So I'm going to set this to minus one centimeter, but you can play about with it once you've got your files working, because this is stuff you can change. You, you just change the value and recompile it. So I'm just going to be setting up some basic ones. The even side would be for even number of pages. And then this one, odd side margin, is for odd side pages. And because we don't want them looking any different, uh, let's go with one centimeter there as well. Next up is text height and text width. These are how much of the space on your page it takes up. So I found that a good size for text height is 23 centimeters for A4 paper. So let's go with that. Again, this is something that you can change whenever you like. Realistically, what I'm putting in, you don't need to stick with. You can change it if you want. Again, text width, I'm going to go with 18 centimeters because I think that works quite well. The next important thing you need to be able to do is make your title information. At the minute, this is going to print nothing. Basically, you need title, author, maybe the date you put it in if you're affiliated to somewhere, such as a university or a university school, then you want to put that in as well. So I'm going to do it for my channel at the minute. I'm not going to do it for what I would do with the university because that's different. So let's first have a look. So the way you do titles is to do a backslash title and then you type in your title, which for this one is LaTeX beginners tutorial. And that would print something. 
but it's not going to print where I want it to. It's going to print something like this. It's a bit too far down the page for me. I want it a bit higher up. So for that, I'm going to use the vspace command. The vspace command kind of does what it says on the, on the tin. It gives you a space in the vertical. Now, if you make it positive, you'll get things moving down the page. And if you make it negative, it'll move up the page. So I'm going to go with minus 3.5 centimeters because that is, roughly speaking, how high I want it to move up the page. This will all become a bit clearer once we've got enough to make the title on the page and I can show you them moving around. Similarly, we can look at author. Now that, for me, is obviously my name. So for you, it would be your name. So author Thomas Rintoul, and I'm going to go with, again, a vspace, but this one's only going to be minus three millimeters. You can see where I'm going with this. I've done this a few times, so I know what I need for formatting. I also got it over on another screen so I can double check my values. Again, let's have a look at the next line down, which is affiliation. This is not necessarily one that you will use. I'm going to use it here because I feel like it's something that I've used before, and I think it's important to show it, but don't feel you have to use it if you don't have anything to sort of affiliate yourself with. So again, I'm going to use another vspace because I like the, I figured out what formatting I like. And then this is where we're going to bring in sizes and italics. So the affiliation is less important than the title of the article or your name. So we're going to make it a little smaller. For that, we do backslash small and then open up more curly brackets. But say we want to put it in italics. Well, here we do backslash IT and then type it out. So the affiliation for me at the minute is Thomas Rintoul YouTube channel make sure to like and subscribe. And then finally, the last thing that we need in this section is the date. So when did you write it? So the date is done by, again, I'm gonna use a vspace because I know my formatting that I like. So it's minus one centimeter and then March, 2021. Now I will come on to how you can do that a little differently later on because there are different things. But we're nearly there. We're nearly at the point that we can have a document to show on this right hand side of the screen. So let's let's do this last bit we need to do. Oh. The next bit we need to do is to tell LaTeX what bit it wants to actually be printing to the screen. This is what's going to be contained in the begin and end documents command. So what we do is we do backslash begin and then document. And then the way that my editor works is and it in for me. Yours might not do this automatically, so make sure that you've written backslash end and then document or whatever type of thing you're doing. So you could be doing begin end equation, for example. So here we're doing begin end document and nothing that we put outside of this is going to be printed to the PDF. So all this information we've just put in here in this the title author affiliation date section. That's all going to be wrapped up in one command. Backslash make title. I've done control S, which is actually going to compile it for me, but it's not going to show it here. I can drag in my PDF that I've created. I've got it over in the folder that I put the LaTeX file in. And this is what we've got here. Now, actually, my formatting is a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the formatting here to be minus four millimeters and hit control S. That didn't work. I'm going to change this to be minus 0 0.5 centimeters. And there we can see that it's moved the date down and it's no longer interfering. So obviously I can move things around a little. Maybe I want to make it 0 0.75 centimeters. And every time I hit control S, it recompiles the document and shows me what's going on. So here we can see we've got LaTeX Beginners Tutorial, my name, Thomas Rintoul YouTube channel, and March 2021. This has been a very long walk for a rather short drink of water. So what else can we do here? Now I mentioned that there is this section here, the March 2021. Now I've specified what it is, but maybe you just want it to print today's date. To do that, we need to use a different package, specifically a package called date time. It's rather intuitive. So if we go backslash use package date time, which will give us uh, time and date formatting. 
this is the, the, the percent symbol is the comment uh, symbol for LaTeX. So anything that you put behind a percent sign is not going to show up. This is something I'll come to later because this could cause you problems. This will then let us change this to be backslash today. And then if I recompile this document, it will replace March 2021 with Wednesday, 24th of March 2021, the date that I'm recording this video. So I'm going to change this back to March 2021, but that is something you can do. A lot of the time though, it's not particularly useful unless you really need it for, like say, data publication of an article that you've written for a, a newspaper or a magazine, that sort of thing. The other thing you might be realising is that the bit that says LaTeX Beginners Tutorial, it's not particularly, it's not standing out, is it? So I'm going to do another size thing, do backslash huge and contain my LaTeX tutorial section in that and then recompile it and it's much bigger now, it's more, it's a bit clearer. That being said, it's not the best font and I know it's not the best font, especially if you're, for example, dyslexic. You might be having trouble reading this. So I'm going to change this to be a different font that should hopefully be a little better. For that, we need to use a command called renew command. So renew command, and then in curly brackets, backslash family default. And then in another set of curly brackets, we put in the code for the font we want. So I'm going to go with PHV, which is, I believe, Helvetica. So this should hopefully be a little easier to read. There's another fun thing we can do with LaTeX though. If I do backslash LaTeX and recompile, we can change this to that. It gives you the LaTeX logo, but in Helvetica font. We, so we've got as far as writing a title, an author, the affiliation and the date. That's only the start of a document. We need the rest of it. Writing is probably the simplest thing, like writing a sentence. So, hello, my name is Thomas. I can write that and it will just print it. If I do control S, it will just recompile this to give me, hello, my name is Thomas. Now that is pretty simple. Chances are that that's not everything you're gonna to want to write. Perhaps you're writing something financial. So UK VAT is 20%. So this is where we might hit some problems. Yeah, here we go. UK VAT, that's value added tax or sales tax, is 20. 20 what? I've written 20%. You can see it here, there's a percentage symbol, but it's not appeared. Now that's because the percentage symbol is the comment symbol for LaTeX. To get that to show up, we need to do backslash percent. Now if I recompile this, we'll get UK VAT is 20%. This is something that happens with a lot of symbols. For example, if I want to write, um, say, say I want to write the, the US government stimulus check, is $2,000 or whatever it actually is, and then I try and compile that, then suddenly everything kind of breaks and nothing happens. And that's because the dollar sign is used for math mode. It's an American program, that's why I'm saying math. It should be maths, but we need to specify that we're not going into maths mode. Again, backslash dollar sign, and we get the US government stimulus check is $2,000. This happens with a lot of things. And it's one of the quirks of LaTeX that can make it a little bit harder to write in. For example, it's easier to write the US government stimulus check is dollar sign 2000 rather than backslash dollar sign 2000 and everything like that. But it's something that we just deal with because equations are so much easier. So let's make a new section. So I'm gonna get rid of this stuff that I've written here and just say, um, this is a tutorial on backslash LaTeX for beginners, which has two N's, not two I's. We're go so over the rest of this video, we're going, we are going to look at sections and subsections, equations, and figures. 
subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure that you don't miss the next part on bibliographies and more formatting. So, little plug out of the way. If I do Control S, it will print what I've said. But this isn't particularly useful. Maybe we want to use some sections. So I've, I've said we're going to look at sections and subsections. So maybe you want to give this the heading introduction. For that, we use backslash section introduction. Compile that and here we get section one introduction. But maybe you don't want section one to be introduction. Maybe you want section zero to be introduction. Well, this is where we will use a command called backslash set counter. Now for that, we want to set the counter for sections. So put in section and then how much you want to change it by. So maybe you want it to start from two. So you put in section one and that should give us introduction being section two. This could be useful if you're writing, like say, a chapter of a book. So you're starting on chapter 12. You don't want it to say zero, you want it to say 12. But that's not what we're going for here. Maybe we want it to count from one, like a computer, well, from zero, like a computer does in a lot of cases. Well, if we do set counter section minus one, we'll then get counting from zero. But maybe we don't want the introduction to have a section number at all. So we can ignore this. So we'll comment that out with a percentage sign and then use section star. Recompile it again and we lose the zero. This means that introduction doesn't have a number and then when we make the new section, which since we're moving on to the next section will be equations, then that should start with number one, as it does here. So equations are something that realistically is why a lot of us use LaTeX. It makes it a lot easier to write equations. Let's say we want to have a look at some different equations that are used commonly in maths and physics. Let's have a look at, for example, the area of a circle. So to talk about that, let's make a subsection. Now, subsections are really useful. They're in, they're sections inside sections and they're denoted differently. So we've got subsection and we'll do area of a circle. If I compile this, and you don't have to compile after you write every line, I'm doing that to illustrate this. So we've got 1.1, so it's section one, subsection one, area of a circle. So to calculate the area of a circle, we use this equation. And this is where we have to do a begin and end inside a begin end. So we already have our begin document to end document. Here, we're going to do a begin equation. Oh, and because I hit tab by accident, it slightly screwed things up, but that's okay. We've got begin equation and end equation. So what we're doing here, that you don't need this much space, I've just done it to make it a little bit easier. So what we want to appear in our equation is the area is equal to pi times the radius squared. So how are we going to do pi? Well, it's a lot simpler than you might be thinking. All we have to do is type backslash pi and then r to the power of two. If I recompile this, it will then give us, so it's done things a little strangely in that formatting has kind of gone out the window. So what's gone wrong? Well, let's first, ditch all this spacing and do control S. There we go. So we've got begin equation, end equation, and with our equation in the middle, A equals the backslash pi, so that gives you the pi symbol, times R, the radius to the power of two. Now that gives us this over on the right hand side. Now you'll notice that over on the right hand side is something I've not typed. I haven't typed bracket one bracket. This is something very useful in LaTeX that allows us to refer to different things. To do that, we need to tell it what it should call it. So here, the reference is going to be found by backslash label. So we're labeling this equation as circle area. 
Now, the reason I've said circle area is because we could quite easily do something similar with a different shape. So if I do another subsection, area of a cube, then we've got begin equation and backslash label cube area and our area is 6 times the length of a side squared. We've got the area of the cube is 6 times L squared, L being the length of the side, so square that you get one side and then there's 6 sides to a cube. Now what we've got here is equation 2. This is useful because we want to be able to reference our equations. For example, if I say the area of a circle is given by equation 1, then that's great. Up until the point that I do this and move the cube above it. So that's not particularly helpful for us. What I want to be able to do is have that number change. So if I say instead of equation 1, I say equation tilde to keep it all in the same line in case there was a line break, and then backslash ref, and then I look at this. Now, Atom brings this up, makes it nice and easy to see it. In other softwares, that might not be quite as easy, but we've got backslash reference, or backslash ref, open curly brackets, and then circle area. Now, I've realized I've misspelled circle there, but that's fine. The area of a cube is given by equation, and again, ref, cube area. And then if I compile this, this is where it gets really clever, we've got area of a circle is given by equation one, area of a cube is given by equation two. But what if I swap them? I move my area of a cube up above my area of a circle and recompile. This is where things get interesting. Now, the area of a circle is given by equation two, which is what it's reflecting here, and the area of a cube is given by equation one. This is really useful if you're writing long documents because you might shift things about, and if you've had to manually say, oh, the equation for the area of a circle is given by equation one, and now it's equation two, but you've referenced this in like 17 other places. You've now got to go and manually change them. This way, LaTeX does it for you. It's really helpful. Let's have a look at a more complex one. Let's have a look, let's make another subsection, and how about we look at luminosity. I'm using the, I'm using the luminosity equation, which is the brightness of a star, because it includes some Greek letters. Let's do a backslash begin equation. And again, it's being a little bit screwy with uh, how it's done that. Just This is mostly user error on my end, but it's fine. As long as we've got begin equation and end equation, then in the middle, we can do our L is equal to. Now, the equation for luminosity is 4 pi r squared, the radius of the object giving off the light, times sigma times t to the power of 4. So we'll do 4 backslash pi r squared times sigma t to the power of 4. And we want to call this one, we'll label it as luminosity. Then pop that in there and we get our new subsection, hopefully. Yep, our new subsection, luminosity, L equals 4 pi r squared sigma t to the 4. This is exactly what we're looking for and it's really helpful. So this is the sort of thing that LaTeX is good for. It's good for equation editing and shoving things in in the right order. But it's good for more things. I'm sure you've had to put pictures, figures, that sort of thing, in your articles before. This is something that, of course, LaTeX can do. So let's move on and do a new section, which we will call figures. So figures are a little bit more annoying. We want this to take up half of the space on the line. So let's have a look at this. The first thing we're going to want to do is actually bring in a couple of new commands. I've used use package and now we're going to bring in graphic x. We're also going to use the package called wrap fig just to make sure everything sort of fits around it properly. And we're also going to use 
another package called set space. Uh, I think that's actually for something else, but we probably do need to bring it in because it'll make formatting a little nicer later on, as well as geometry. This is good for centering, which is something we want to be able to do. So the first thing we're going to do is begin and then wrap fig. We're then going to put it in section area one. I can't exactly remember what that is. And then uh, 0 0.5 line width. This means that it will take up half of the line width. That's as much as it will take up before it just won't show it. So for us, our line width is 18 centimeters. So this means that it will take up nine at most. Next, we'll look at a little bit of formatting, which is something that I've done through trial and error before. I'm going to move things back 0.5 centimeters. And then we're going to start centering this. Now we want to include graphics. Now this is where that file that I mentioned before comes in. This one, the, the image file. This is the picture of me. It's, a, it's an uncropped version of what I use as my channel photo. So we want to be able to bring this into the document. For that, we use the command include graphics. But that's not particularly helpful yet. It doesn't know where to look. So the first thing we want to do is set its width. So we've said that it won't take up any more than nine centimeters. So let's, let's let it use all the space it can. Now we need to tell it the file name. Now it'll look for graphic files such as JPEG or maybe PNG. This is a JPEG. So we just need to type in the file name. So everything before the dot. So in this case, that is STA underscore 3707. Now you could have called it anything, I've just left it as the file name that it had. Then if I do control S and it should bring it in, it now brings it in and we've got this. Now, this isn't particularly helpful. We've got a thing, 10.05. What is that? Actually, what is that? Ah, sorry, I've made a minor mistake here. So actually, this what we're dealing with here is me having to debug things a little. But we've got this thing and it's got this 10.5 because it's not dealing with things properly. What this should be is wrap figure, not wrap fig. My mistake. So if we recompile it now, it gives us the image. But the image on its own is not particularly useful. Let's install a package called capped of. So we'll use backslash use package capped. And I need to double check if it's got a dash in it. It does. It's capped of with a dash. This will let us do captioning. So we want to put in a caption of what this picture is a picture of. Caption of, and then put in curly brackets, and we'll make this small because it is a caption. And we'll say this is Thomas Rintoul, me standing outside the School of Physics and Astronomy in St. Andrews. He is wearing a navy jumper and blue jeans. Okay, after a little bit of troubleshooting, we've got it working. Uh, I wasn't really sure what was working here, um, but now we've done, we've added in this section that says label Thomas. Now this will let us refer to it. So if I say um, a picture of Thomas Rintoul can be seen in figure, and here again, we're going to go with this ref command. Thomas, and then recompile this, and we get, like we had before, picture of Thomas Rintoul can be seen in figure one, and it's been moved on to the next page because there's not quite enough space here. We can get it all on the same page by doing backslash, new page, recompile, and then we have this. So it's formatting can be a little bit of a mess, and because there's not enough text here, it's not really clear how it's formatting things. LaTeX will just sort of put things where there's space for them and you kind of deal with it. But this is not too bad. You would realistically have a lot more typing here, maybe a description of who I am and that sort of thing that would fill up this space. So that's where I'm going to finish today. Hopefully this has been interesting to you. It's covered a few sort of key things in LaTeX. I will make sure that I've posted the packages that I've used in the video description, both for LaTeX and for Atom. I'll give you links to Overleaf and to Atom to download it because I think it's really helpful, as well as to Tech Live, which will get the whole thing working. There is also a lot of help files on the internet that can be really useful for getting things working when they do go wrong. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like and comment. It's a lot longer than most videos that I've made, but I feel like it's 
a useful thing to exist on the internet. And there's not that many that are as informative for somebody writing for science. In the meantime though, make sure that you are subscribed and you've hit the bell icon so you don't miss the follow up to this where I'm going to talk about bibliographies, formatting, using Mendeley and BibTeX. And in the meantime, I hope you have a very good rest of your day. I've been Thomas Rintoul and I will see you in my next video. See ya.